My name is Jay Montgomery. I was about five. My uncles and my dad had a gospel group. I was out there with them and my uncle pulled his guitar his bag. The knobs on it was shining, caught my eye, I fell in love with it. I seen him over there tuning it up and I ran over there sitting in his lap. I went home that night, that's all I could think about was just playing the guitar. Actually, my dad allowed me to travel with him on the road. So by the time I started traveling with my dad and my uncles, I was about six, maybe. And um, it was just an awesome experience. My biggest memory of Jay as a child is always him with the good turn in his hand. From the time he was two, maybe three, he always wanted to play. That was his dream. He always wanted to make sure that I heard what he was playing. And I liked it. If I didn't like it, let me do it again, Mama. I'll do it again. 2008, April 27th. Got up like any normal day. By this time, I'm 18. I had a job and I was actually finna get married. I woke up about 7 o'clock that morning. I just had that uh, eerie feeling. But it was a beautiful day and it just. Pretty much the day was kind of made out to just be a fulfilling day. It was going to be a very promising day. End up going to church. The service was just overwhelming. It was just, the spirit was so high in the church. At the end of the service, my dad came to me. He was just telling me how good I had played. And he hugged me and he said, I love you, son. I'm going to never forget that. So I'm thinking like, my dad told me this for a reason. But I really just shook it off. Roland had just bought an extra dish. And uh, he was getting ready to go to Birmingham. Adam and Curtis was finna ride with Roland. They had asked me if I wanted to go. And I said, I'll see what it look like out here. I'm finna ride. That's the only thing I'm thinking about. I crunk my four wheel up. I had noticed I was low on game. They're like, you gonna ride that thing to the store? I was like, yeah. They're like, Jay, it's race day. You know, it's, it's, it's traffic out there. It's, it's state trooper, police everywhere. I was like, I'll just take the bad road. Well, we'll meet you at the store then. When I got to the store, they were, they was already there. They had pumped their gas. They were waiting on me to get there. Everybody in the car had an iffy look. Like, well, I just ain't, I ain't feeling it. So I showed it off. I said, man, it, I told them, I said, everything be all right. <laughs> By the time I actually started going up the hill, I had went in the fifth year. I was reaching about 78, 79, going in the 80. When it changed gears, I was on two wheels. As I was going up the hill, I seen a state trooper. I seen his brake lights. And I kept looking back in my head, I was like, I'm finna get pulled over. So the last time I had actually turned around and I had turned back around, I noticed the four-wheeler was coming up on a ditch and it was a light pole right there. And I hit the pole head on, probably doing about 83, 84 miles per hour. I had a helmet on, which was the only thing to save my life. Pretty much my head and my right side of my body hit the pole and it was kind of like lights out after that. And I had to go back there and see him by myself. And I'm just thinking about the day how he looked. One side of him was perfectly fine. His left side was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And I pulled a sheet back and I remember looking at his right side and it was like a cartoon character. So from the left side, he was so recognizable. And from the right side, I didn't even know who he was. They had drilled a hole in his head because his brain was swelling so fast that they was actually pulling fluid off of his brain. My memory going to when the doctors came and told us that Jay had lost the use of his arm. Yeah. And I didn't want to tell him. You didn't want to tell him. When I went in there to tell him about that, he kept telling me, he said, something wrong with my arm, dude. I ain't got no feeling to it. And when I told him, I said, well, son, the doctor said you lost the use of your arm. And he just got quiet. And he wouldn't say anything. He said, mm. And first thing I thought of, as Jay giving up on life. I said, don't you give up on me, boy. And Jay told me, he looked at me and he said, I'm not going to give up, Daddy. He said, I just got to teach myself how to play the guitar all over again. Jay would always say, I refuse to be defeated. I'm not going to give up until I get back to where I was, if not better. That's where he is right now. He's better than he was then. Yeah, he's a lot better. He's a lot better he now. He plays better now. You want your child to mature. You don't want him to go through anything, but if it is that they go through something catastrophic, you want them to come out of it in a positive way. He has. And he touches me every time I spend time with him. I mean, all the way to the court, he touches me. And that's all I'm going to tell about it.
that's just my boy. What's next for Jay Montgomery? To be honest, the story has still been written about Jay Montgomery. But now I have actually had the opportunity to play behind a uh, major artist, Lil G of Silk. And I'm actually doing shows now with a band called the Collection Plate Band out of Atlanta. I'm doing a couple of R&B shows and everything such of that nature. I want everybody to understand that when you're going through a situation, the thing is not to give up. The thing is not to kick yourself while you're down, but keep your self-esteem, your integrity, and keep your passion for whatever it is that you do. And that right there, that little bit, drive to get you wherever you need to go. Giving up is never awkward.